All right. We got the opportunity to watch Cannibal Girls. Yes, Cannibal Girls. <laughs> it was um, produced in 1973 or released in 1973. Yeah. It was on a budget of like 15 grand. 15. And they raised 12 grand just with like friends, but then they also collected the other three grand by selling stocks in the movie. They like designed a corporation and then <laughs> sold stocks in it. So there's probably, you might be a part owner and watching this right now. Oh, wow. Um, that but, would be amazing. Yeah. I'd, I'd Let us know if you have stock in this movie. <laughs> and let me know what it's worth now. How much you buy for it when you got it, when yeah. it came out. And How then... long have you been claiming losses <laughs> yeah. on your stocks in this movie? Spare a dollar? Oh, get away from me, you bum. It has some some good clout behind it though. It's directed by Ivan Reitman. Yes. Um, the recently passed yeah. Ivan Reitman. Yeah. Uh, this movie uh, stars Eugene Levy and Andrea Martin. Uh, people I'm sure are familiar with Eugene Levy. He's still doing things like Schitt's Creek mm-hmm. uh, to this day in American Pie. Uh, but uh, in the 70s, in this movie, he was like 26, 27 years old. It yeah, was dude. his second movie. Um, and he started it with Andrea Martin uh, and both of them alumni from uh, SCTV, um, Second City Television. Anybody that's not familiar, uh, it's kind of like the Canadian version of Saturday Night Live to oversimplify it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, lots of great stars came from there. John Candy came from there. Rick Moranis. Um, and uh, one of my favorite uh, sketches of all time, Great White North uh, was from there. You might see some similarities between that and this. I don't know. You might pick up on a few things. <laughs> don't wreck our show, you hoser. Yep. But yeah, he, uh, Eugene Levy, he plays a, a hell of a guitar. He does. And uh, it was quite a performance. Yeah. He's got a mean mustache, too. It's yes. a nice mutton chops. Yes. <laughs> so we open up the, the movie with what we noticed right away is a really weird setting for a picnic. Um, it's like winter time and <laughs> yes. these, this couple is out for an outdoor yeah. picnic and like kind of not prepared clothing. It looked like on the ocean or, or, <laughs> yeah. or on one of the Great Lakes maybe. Apparently in the original cut of this movie, the original cut was only 63 minutes and they had <laughs> they presented it to like the board and they were like you have to make it longer and you have to add more horror or more comedy. But yeah, it was uh, this, although... This intro has a lot of like weaving into the full arc of the story, which we'll get into. It was like patched in there post like the the original script. Did they uh, record the soundtrack before or after they shot this scene? Because there was no sound. Yeah, exactly. We thought your audio equipment was broken. Yeah, we. I think we both looked at each other like, "Is this? Is is your TV (laughs) broken? What's what's up?" All right. Is there audio? Might be an art film with no sound in the beginning. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, and then, and then uh, they're, they're enjoying the picnic, and then obviously, like we had mentioned, the assailant comes out, and it's pretty abrupt. Like, it's just screams, and then yeah. the dude gets murdered. Yeah. And it's with some chick in stilettos that's walking around, and he's dead, and the woman's, like, screaming, <laughs> and she just rips her top off, and then it cuts to Eugene okay. Levy and... He's and pulling in. Uh, he's taking a leak yep. in the woods. Lori, I've been driving all day without stopping. Now I've stopped and I'm uh, busy. And Andrea Martin, who's playing his girlfriend, is yelling to him, wanting to know about where they're going. And, yeah. and she's mad at him. And then he's trying to work on his shitty car. What's the matter? Nothing. Maybe there's not enough air in the tires. And, and they do the classic horn gag where he says, try to start the car, and she honks yeah. the horn. Because that's how you start a car. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. honk the horn, yeah. and then it goes. Okay, try it now. <laughs> so he hits his head. But the whole time, there's somebody like stalking them again from yeah. the bushes. I'm like, whoa. They got us the first time. I, is the same thing going to happen again? Exactly. And it doesn't. Mm-hmm. But it is like one of... You see a female watching them, right? Standing yeah, in the bushes it's like or very faint, but you can see like the long hair and the red like right. jacket or whatever. Yep, and they they uh, have a couple more mishaps with the car for mm-hmm. some reason. Whoa! 
Did I just, I, I must have just saw that. Like, it seemed like he just flipped it into his fucking mouth. Trying to establish that the, the car is, you know, it's kind of cranky and yeah. you gotta be nice to it mm -hmm. and it will start for you. I wonder if the end of the movie, they're gonna get to a point where they gotta get in the car and they gotta be nice <laughs> to the car and they'll escape Come in on, the car. Baby. Like any high quality automobile, you just have to hit the dash a few times. Yeah. Maybe that's foreshadowing. <laughs> Maybe. Place your bets. <laughs> You'll just have to tune, stay tuned in to find out. Yes. Um, yeah, and, and so the Clifford, he... Uh, that's Eugene Levy's character is yeah, Clifford. Yes, exactly. Yes. Eugene Le Levy's character, Clifford and Gloria, um, make it to the, the nearest motel. Um, the innkeeper, just for... This gets later in the story, but or the motel manager, or whatever the hell yeah. you want to call her, she is the woman that actually owned the mansion that we'll talk about later in the movie. She owned it. Yeah, she was like in in real life. She was the, the owner oh. of that of that mansion. And it's like, it, can we shoot here? Yeah, or can we shoot outside of here? Yeah, for some establishing shots, and yeah. we'll pay you. Uh, in uh, exposure. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exposure at your 85 years of age. So they're, they're at the motel. They're talking to this woman, and she goes into the lore of the town. Yes. And it's this legend about these cannibal girls that were... Legend. Legend. Yeah. Apparently legendary, mm -hmm. right? But they do say it's the legend of the three sisters yeah. at the house. And we kept thinking of that while we were watching, because in the flashbacks... All the cars were like current age. Yeah. Everyone like kind of dressed the same. So like, okay, this is kind of close. The the woman at the motel that owns the house in real life starts to tell, or she talks about the legend, and then and then it's the yeah. you know we 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 fade to the yeah. flashback. So it's the legend, the the legend that started so long ago. Yeah, uh, you know, so long ago, last four months ago, last fall. <laughs> yep. <laughs> So it flashes back, and there's a guy sleeping in the woods, mm -hmm. and a girl walks up and like chops wood right next to his head. And <laughs> yeah, <it> freaks <laughs> him out, and he wakes up, and she's like, "Come with me." Is he a backpacker? Uh, I guess Gryffindor backpacker. <laughs> uh, and then there's. Uh, another guy who's at a restaurant. Yeah, I, th I, was, I couldn't tell if it was like a restaurant, or like a wedding reception or uh, something. He's just weird. there. He's out of town. Yeah. And yeah. one of the girls picks him up there and says, come back to the farm with me. Come yeah. visit. So he goes. Um, and then the third guy uh, is traveling through town. He's on his way to a parade. Yeah. He's a parade <laughs> coordinator. He's very important. I run... The parade. Oh, you mean you're like the uh, grand marshal kind of thing, eh? Oh, I run parades. That's my job. So important. And he stops at the gas station, and yeah. they say, go this way. It's like 200 miles, but mm -hmm. if you go two miles, you take a right, and it's only four miles to where yeah. you want to go, but it'll be hard on your car. <laughs> it'll cut your time in half, but it's pretty hard in your car. Oh, don't worry about that. It's rented. I don't care. So he gets greedy. Yeah. And then he's going down the road, and one of the girls is standing in the middle of the road. <laughs> yes. And he veers off and smashes into a tree or something. <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> wow. Am I crazy? Was his wagon blue earlier? It totally was blue earlier. <laughs> It's kind of like motel hell. Yeah, exactly. So is she just standing in the road? Yeah. All the just time? Just waiting. Just like, waiting? Yeah. Would she really stand there the whole time? But you know what I think is the gas station guy radios the the restaurant True. because they have a gigantic radio tower in their backyard. If you look, <laughs> it goes up completely out of frame every yeah. time you see the back of that house. Oh, man. What was that old lady, motel lady, doing in real life Who that knows? she had such a... <laughs> Such a gigantic radio She's tower. probably talking to North Korea. <laughs> She's wondering what's going on in Pyongyang. Wolfman Jack. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so we, we see them basically establish that there are these seductress that just bring these guys over to the house. And then they just taunt them with what could be sex for like days. Yeah. And they're just chilling. The Harry Potter guy has a Monopoly board that he brings, and they have money in the middle, which is <laughs> bullshit. Right. <laughs> you cannot play Monopoly like that. You will play for days and days until yeah. you're murdered by cannibals. <laughs> you cannot play like that. 
Why is there money in the middle? That bothers me. Yeah. So now you play Monopoly. <laughs> that game will go on for eight weeks. Yeah. Play like that. <laughs> It's fun if you play by the rules. Yeah, exactly. Just a suggestion. <laughs> so we, we get to the we get to the Harry Potter guy who is the first to finally like convince the woman to go up and yeah. and do the deed. Um, but we get up to the he room. He doesn't get very far. No, he looks around the room, lays in bed, and he's like, "Yes, this is finally going to happen." And then you just see him screaming. <laughs> And yes. you don't know why. And She's then she holding pulls scissors. out scissors yeah. with blood covered in them. Yeah, and then it's just like succession, right? Wow, he's hairy. <laughs> Holy shit, the camera can't even capture all the follicles. Yeah. Leona, I th- what do you do? No. Oh, his pants are on no. his ankles. Yeah. No. He backs up in the walls Velcro and yeah. he just sticks to it. Wow. <laughs> 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 So it's the next guy, yeah. and he's he's brings his girl up, and they they chain him to the bed. Mm-hmm. All three of the girls come yeah. in, and they just start like eating him eating alive. Him. And oh man, <laughs> that's by far the best scene in the whole movie. I thought that was perfect. Yes, nothing could compare to yeah, that. But it was, was really cool. cool. Yeah. Well, they poured cherry sauce on him at yeah, first. Yeah, and he's like, oh, right. che- is that is that cherry wax? Is that wax or is that <laughs> cherry sauce? Yeah. That seems like a garnish. And not so much like a like a sexy thing. Yeah. After the after the flashback, we get back to the hotel. Yes. And Granny is walking them to their room now. We see the town, and it's winter, and here northern Vermont. Yeah. We're not far from the Canadian border, so yeah. the, the scenery in this movie is uh, familiar yeah. to us. Well, it looks like uh, Enosburg Falls. <laughs> It kind of does. That's the British to Duffy Road. <laughs> and uh, I enjoyed that it had the shitty brown snow slush yeah. that we Ugh. deal with every year. I haven't seen that really represented well. Like, that's <laughs> the reality of Vermont in the winter. It's the fucking worst. It's it's beautiful in some it's, spots, but it's really a lot of shitty, dirty snow. Yeah, it's beautiful in some spots, so don't come here. <laughs> <laughs> we have enough of you fuckers. <laughs> Just kidding. Just kidding. So we, we go into the motel room, and uh, Clifford's trying to get a little hot and heavy mm. with Gloria. They're like... Kind of going into it, kind of not. Um, it was Clifford, such a erotic story they yeah, just heard. I know, right? That so they just had to rush back to the hotel. So excited room. by the cannibalism in the mm-hmm. town. Um, the thing that really threw me off, and that probably threw Gloria off, is that Clifford's just smoking the whole time. Yeah. Like as they're rolling around yeah. in the bed, he just has a cigarette. He's like yeah. a dude with a beer that falls over and doesn't spill a drop. It's yeah. like that with a cigarette. And <laughs> it's insane. And he's. She asked him to play a song yes. on the guitar, and he puts um, his cigarette on his guitar string, <laughs> yeah, which I just, thought was funny. That was amazing. Uh, and so he plays her a song, and she falls asleep. Yeah. She just falls asleep. Mm-hmm. So boring he is. And this is important. Yeah. It's also an important moment in this movie. Like the car not starting and them getting it to start, maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's a payoff <laughs> moment. Could be a red herring. It could be a legit payoff moment. Could You'll be. have to continue this episode to see. That's YouTube retention, folks. <laughs> That's how you do it. That's how you do it. You got to keep watching. We then, for some reason, cut to like a crazy fight scene. There's like yes. three dudes fighting, but they're they're fighting and. We now know, after the second time watching it, that these two guys were hitmen hired by the sheriff of the town to kill him. Mm-hmm. And they they take him out, call the sheriff, and say it's done. Um, and the sheriff comes back with like the warehouse owner and is like, "Did anybody else see this?" And he says, "No." And like it's yes. just kind of like, so you realize that the town's greasy. They tried to kill us, Jimmy. They did. They're dirty fucking cops. Jesus, shut the fuck up, Phil. The warehouse owner's got a dead body on a skid truck and yeah. pushing him around and somehow not catching the guy's hair in the wheel. Yeah. His hair is like <laughs> hanging there and his hair is very close to That's that amazing. wheel. It's like, I haven't been so worried about hair since I was 23. Look at A. <laughs> I love it. Oh, man. Yeah, and then it, it like, we also see more like cuts into the town after that. Yeah. 
Yeah, there's something wrong in there. Oh, it was rattling or knocking. It sounds like a carburetor. Well, I'll leave it here. Okay. Pick it up tomorrow. Okay. Something wrong in there. Points at the whole engine bay. <laughs> leave it here. Pick it up tomorrow. Who are you? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. So the lady that rents uh, Eugene Levy the room mm -hmm. uh, takes them up to the restaurant. She's very insistent. You have to see this place where these cannibal murders happened. Yep. It's a restaurant now. Um, and she and just talks and talks. Talks and, and talks, talks and talks and talks <laughs> and walks them up this gigantic hill. Yep. She's got ski poles and... Uh, at some and she's got a German Shepherd with her. Yeah. They're the dogs, and they just like run off into the woods. Yeah, just gone. And they 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 reach the restaurant and knock on the door. And nobody answers, and they like stroll inside, and yep. they're greeted by the owner of the home, uh, Reverend Alex St. John. Yeah, and this guy is a character. He is. Wait till you see this guy. I thought he was a fucking magician, bro. <laughs> I did not know he was a reverend. I didn't think he was a magician until he started wearing the top hat. Yeah. And then I'm like, and the white gloves. White gloves, yeah. And I'm like, he might be a magician. <laughs> At one point, the reverend takes Gloria to look in the library or something. He's yeah. like, come with me, come with me. And like, just out of nowhere, his hand goes down and he grabs her. And like, <laughs> yeah, dude. That's kind of weird. But it's not the only time because he's like super handsy with the girls. Yeah. Um, he sits her down for dinner and like massages her shoulders yes. as she sits down. It's yes. crazy, dude. <laughs> the first part that, that made me laugh about the dinner was that the Reverend just decided, I'm going to eat dinner with you guys. Yes. Yeah, so like, they're like, I'm do you gonna... mind if I join you? <laughs> yeah. Like, I yeah. They were, they were just confused and he didn't get the hint and just sat down and ate with them. May I join you? Um, and he like rings this little bell and out comes one of the, one of the, what we know is the cannibal yes, girls from the flashbacks. Yeah, exactly. And the, she has a platter the of the ancient lore. Yeah. The ancient flashbacks, <laughs> the legendary flashbacks. Yeah, exactly. And it's the same girl from four months ago. And she's the same look and feel. I so it must be, she can't must believe be immortal. She, she looks the same as four months ago. <laughs> yeah. But she comes. She comes out with a with a platter of like um, wine glasses. We grow the grapes ourselves, our own vineyards. They grow on my grandfather's grave. Two grandfather. Old grandfather. dirty old graveyard grapes. Yeah. What the fuck? So the reverend takes them to uh, the guest room or the bedroom where yeah. they'll be staying. They they try to leave and they take like a ten steps out. And they go out and it's bullshit. just thunder and lightning. And, and then like, they turn Whoa. around and go back in. <laughs> yeah. In the middle of winter, thunder yeah. and lightning. <laughs> oh, yes! 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 We got it, baby! We got it! We got it! Woo! Woo! It goes to, like, this... Re the Reverend, br like, bringing the girls in while they're sleeping. Like, uh, opening the door slowly and letting the girls in so they can have, like, this ritualistic thing... Um, they tie up Clifford, yes. but leave Gloria unharmed yes. and uh, untouched. And Gloria tries to run away and gets out into the woods and finds like a car that's driving down some side road yes. and stops him. And he's like, oh, don't worry. I'm a doctor. I'll take care of you. <laughs> right. Brings her back to his house and like put drugs her and puts yeah. her to sleep. Everybody in the town, even people driving on the road yeah, are in on are in People on just it. driving around <laughs> looking for... It's that radio tower, bro. It's telling everybody what to do. Oh, my God. You're right. <laughs> yeah. I didn't yeah. even think about was... that. The only thing on the radio is the reverend. Yeah, he's exactly. Like, All points, bulletin. Keep an eye out for Gloria. <laughs> She's barefoot yeah. in... My aunt's nighty. <laughs> so she, she, yeah, she gets drugged. But then we cut back to the motel room, and she wakes up from her nap, wearing <laughs> the clothes when she fell asleep from the nap earlier. Yeah, there it is. We got it. <laughs> Call back. Mm -hmm. You should have been paying attention. Start the video over. Yeah. <laughs> Rewatch it. Give us another like. Plus one view. Yeah. <laughs> So she wakes up, yeah, and it's just like the movie had been bounced back to that earlier point where she fell asleep. Yeah. Um, and she's confused. Yeah. She's like, was it all a dream? Mm -hmm. 
so then they go out on the town, but then you kind of get a feeling that Eugene Levy is in on it. Um, and he's like, why don't we go have dinner at the, <laughs> at the restaurant? restaurant? Yeah. <laughs> Again. Yeah, and they go walk around the town. They have like a, like a great day, but then the sheriff stops them. is like, what the hell right. are you guys doing? We don't fancy much of strangers around here, especially hippies and freaks. Oh, sir, you must be mistaken. We're not... Shut up. And right. he's like, well, we need a ride to the restaurant. And the yes. sheriff gives him a ride. He's like, where do you guys need to go? Yeah. Well, I guess we can go to the restaurant. You think this is a taxi? <laughs> well, you just asked, asshole. And then he brings them there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and then and then you you really start to feel that it's it was all yeah. real. Because Gloria's like, this is the same house. And they start making those call forwards. And um, they get into the into the house. And the reverend and the girls are like, ready for them this time right um and they set up this ritual so the reverend hypnotizes gloria yeah. somehow we're not really told how he does this yeah. black magic <laughs> and she picks up a damn flail <laughs> and socks eugene levy right in the gut yeah dude. and it kills him yeah gloria i'm sorry no 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 he just buckles and falls on the floor and dies yeah. and then they all sing yeah you see gloria kind of take the the new reins as the the newest cannibal girl. yes oh it's like the end of the witch yeah so she's the legendary fourth cannibal girl <laughs> they'll be talking about her for Months to come. For at least three months. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and then like we go right from that to like a quick scene back at the motel. And it's the, the old granny yes. with a new couple. And the new couple's like, hey, we're just yeah. passing through. And she's like, let me tell you about the this, the legend of, of our town. And then it's the ending yeah. credits. Pretty, I mean, for how shittily it was made in the beginning <laughs> apparently yes they did a pretty good job with yeah. the arc i want to start off this next segment by saying if you're a fan of polygamy yeah this is the movie for you the reverend has at the end four wives yeah and more to come mm -hmm. i think it's unlimited wives because what what's the lore behind this movie you eat people and you live forever i guess is that what they're saying yeah yeah everlasting life in this one small town but what's Every, the proof yeah of that i know six months yeah and like the lady's 85 <laughs> years old and she looks fucking 85 yeah, she so has she's been eating meat yeah. it shows her at the table with all the other old people in the town that is clamato juice yeah it's worse than drinking blood. Yeah. <laughs> Get your ski poles, Grandma, because you're going to break a hip. Yeah. <laughs> Stop eating people. <laughs> if you're a fan of Garbage Pail Kids, the, the logo is just the same. So if you, if you, if you want to op watch the opening credits, you'll see the Garbage Pail Kids theme yes. with like, the logo. And it's, it's, it's close to... Close to Fright Companion. You're really close to Fright yeah, Companion, yeah. too, yes. so you'll know this where we got This movie ripped us off. Yeah, they did. They had a flashback to the legend of Fright Companion yep. <laughs> six months ago and ripped us off. If you're a fan of uh, motels, which clearly we are, we've reviewed Motel Hell. We had Invasion of the Blood Farmers that had a motel in it. We love motels, so if you're a fan of those, it's yes. going for you. Blood Farmers didn't have a motel in it. It did. Remember, they were. Uh, he washed his hair. It was like swiping his hair. <laughs> oh. Remember, he was swiping his head across the the bathtub. You're right. <laughs> if you're a fan of motels, you're. I I will give you that one, and I'll and I'll add to it, and yeah. I'll say that Motel Hell had a motel. In they it. did. They did. You might not have seen the motel in Motel Hell, but there was there a was motel. a motel in there. Motel Hell. Also, if you're a fan of hypnosis, yeah. Motel Hell had hypnosis, as did this movie. Mm -hmm. Which movie did hypnosis better? Oh, it's got to be Motel Hell. You that, think so? The disco if, lights were too good. If the Reverend was there and the disco lights were here, and it was like Anakin and Obi-Wan. Like Choose Your Fate. Who would win? Like a battle. Disco lights would have the high ground. Guaranteed. I think you're right. Because yeah. disco lights, you just plug them in, they go. Yeah. 
Or as a yeah. reverend, he's got to run out of gas at yeah. some point. And all he does is just hiss at people. Yeah. It's a little weird. <laughs> the hissing, he can't, he can't keep that up forever. No, no. You blow your larynx out. <laughs> Could he hypnotize Cliff from Cheers? Yeah, you never know. We yeah. really need a part two of this movie to explain the lore of the reverend and how he hypnotizes everybody and takes control of the whole town. Yeah. Maybe Ivan Reitman will give us an interview. No. Be like, we'd love to talk about... We, well, we can get it. We can get like a, you know, what do we call it? Was it those people that bring people back from the dead? And we can have them project on a, t- on a table. A necromancer. A necromancer. <laughs> no. <laughs> Not a necromancer. Just have a fucking dead Ivan Reitman. Like, no. This is, uh, a seance. Yes. A seance. And have a little seance and talk to him. Or we can get Daniel Goldberg. I don't know if he's still alive. But we can he have might a be. With him. He might be. Shoutcast yeah. got him. Like, yeah. Why can't we? Yeah, exactly. Retention. Yeah. You're still here. Are you watching? <laughs> you you want be. that seance. You better be watching. You better fucking be. If you're a fan of sloppy ribs yeah. and getting barbecue sauce all over your face, sweet baby rays, this movie has some great scenes of people just digging in on meat. Mm-hmm. If you like people eating meat, if you're a fan of people eating meat and just not giving a shit about how they look, this is the movie for you. Absolutely. If you love magicians, the Reverend looks like a magician. He's a weird character. He is a weird character. What is, is he a vampire? I have no idea what they're trying to make him into, but like Reverend, I guess like maybe like um like a cultist. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, uh, that's that's the only thing I could put is he like a cult leader. And he is he trying to bring Reverend. back the Druid uh, Al Hamid? <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> What's her name? Princess Queen Queen uh, Um Um Amadala. Queen Um Um Hamra. Yeah, whatever her name was from Blood Farmers. <laughs> All these movies tie together. They do. If you're a fan of cars that people get working in the beginning of the movie and you think it's going to save them at the end, this is not the movie for you. I teased that in the beginning, but you know what? They get that car running. (laughs) And and they put a for sale sign on it. (laughs) The guy at the garage that's supposed to fix it just puts a for sale sign on it. There's no payoff there. It's gone. Exactly. Okay, uh... So, Cannibal Girls was recommended to us by uh, the same drunk fan mm-hmm. that recommended Blood Farmers. Yeah. And I got to say, Bad I'm going gonna, gonna to keep going back to the well on this one because mm-hmm. uh, I've never heard of this movie. Um, I am happy that I saw it. It was a learning experience. Yeah. And, oh boy, do we like cannibal movies, yeah. I guess. I guess so. Yeah. We watch a lot of them and hypnosis movies. Yeah. But... But yeah, Cannibal Girls was was great. Um, you can find it on DVD through Amazon or wherever. I think that's where we found it. Yeah. Um, it's also on Tubi, which yes. is free. Yes. So feel free to stream it there. You don't have to like you, you don't have to worry about that stuff. Um, but yeah, it was. Um, I think it's like total like an hour twenty five. Take yeah. the time, watch it. We hope that you enjoyed our review, but we hope yeah. you take the time to watch it yourself and, and yeah. take it in. Check it out. Um... It was a good one. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. Like and subscribe. Thanks. Cheers. Thank what did I say thanks when you said like and subscribe? Yeah, well, you said thanks to the camera. I, okay. Yeah. I said thanks to the camera and I not to so. you. Yeah. If I said it to you, that'd, that'd be, be fucking weird. weird. That'd be weird. <laughs>